We've been talking about the first mitzvah of tefillah, which is tefillah-based Torah, which simply means calling out to Hashem when you're in need, big and small. Now, this sugi in itself has various moving parts, and they're all crucial. The very first one is if you turn to Hashem for something that you need, you should really think through whether or not you need it. In fact, that's part of it. If you're standing before the creator of heaven and earth, Hashem, Hashem, who's all emes, but created us and knows us, understands our psyche, true. But if you tell him you need something, you better need it. Think of that. It's something you don't need, you want it, you'll have to phrase your tefillah a little different. Like, it would be nice for Boi <laughs> if you do this for him. Part of talking to the Rabbi Nishlam and turning to him in time of need, aside from the fact that he is the one to talk to, is that in determining what you really need, the consciousness that you're standing in front of him and talking to him should really give you a much more sober set of needs. There really is no objective set of needs. We're all different. We have different personalities and different upbringings, different experiences. We're in different societies. Obviously, needs vary. But yourself, knowing whom you are and where you are. If you're facing the creator of heaven and earth and telling him, I need something, you better believe you need it. But for real. And he takes care of our needs. And he wants us to adopt him for our needs. So this is so educational. In that standing before Hashem requires us to really evaluate. What are the things on my mind that I feel I've got to attain that I really need? And what are those things that are on my mind because I want them? You know, sort of like a wish list. <laughs> and you really have to think through. Not, is it right to burden Hashem, but do I feel right in His presence thinking that way altogether? You know, once again, you have to be careful. If you express it as a need and it's not a need, you're being dishonest with yourself standing before Hashem and talking to Him. If it's something you would like and you want to express that, okay. But I think the consciousness of your standing before Hashem may make you think twice about it. Is that really something you want to adopt him for? So part of asking for our needs, of course, it's based on the relationship with Hashem, developing the relationship with Hashem. This mitzvah is that you should feel that He's the one to talk to, but it also involves a certain amount of your adjusting or really fine-tuning what it is that you really need, which makes for so much of a higher quality of life. When you recognize that there are things on your mind that you're trying to get, but you don't really need them, that takes so much pressure away from it. It makes your life so much happier. You know, is <laughs> Rashir, when we turn ourselves into needy, we're not sameach, we're poor. Make sure you're not rendering yourself needy when you really have all of your needs. Make sure you don't confuse wants with needs. They're two different worlds. And standing before Hashem is the ideal place for you. Because when you talk to Hashem, you gotta be honest. Which brings us to the second part. And this part is quite serious. The problem with formal tefillah, you know, there's the Shmarna Esrei, which, uh, according to the Rambam, is a different mitzvah. There's the Shmarna Esrei, there's a dress code, you're standing, you're whispering, your feet are together. And there's a real feeling of formality, and that at times takes away from really expressing your feelings to the Rabbi Shalai. The mitzvah of tefillah based Torah is a mitzvah just to talk to Hashem. 
to share your feelings with. Not just ask for your needs, but share your feelings with. Bechol Kareinu doesn't just mean calling out for our needs. It means talking to Him. It really means talking to Him. And it's so important to be honest with the Rebbe Hashem. You know, people go through a lot of struggles in life. People suffer. People have hardship. Very often, because of what we've been taught about Emunah and Bitochen, we try to convince ourselves that we're dealing with it within the framework of Emunah and Bitochen. And really, it's a bit forced, stilted, unnatural, and not so honest. When you're talking to the Rabbeinu Shalala, in this mitzvah, the mitzvah of Philippe Sorrow, which doesn't have a dress code, and doesn't say that you have to be standing, and it doesn't say that you have to whisper and have your, your feet together. You're not in the palace. It's Bechol Karenu, wherever you are, whatever you're going through. The essence, what's most important in this tefillah, is that you be so honest. Express your real feelings to the Rabbi Nishalayim. And this is really, before we begin to talk about what formal davening is, you first have to have the kind of relationship with the Rabbi Nishalayim where you're open with him and honest with him, where talking comes naturally. I really, I really believe that if anyone, if anyone wants to get much more out of his tefillah, I'd even say if anyone has got anything out of his tefillah, he has to first get used to talking to the Rabbi Nishlaylam outside of the specific times for Davin. And talk over what's going on in his life. Thank Hashem for everything he's happy with. Thank Hashem for everything that you feel he's giving you. And then express your true feelings about those things that you're not so happy about. And when I say true feelings, people come and they say they're angry. And I tell them, don't tell me. You're angry at the Rebbe Shalom? Talk to him. Talk to him. Tell him you're angry. Tell him you're angry. Tell him you're angry. Ah, it's the Rebbe You don't talk to him like that. So you mean you talk to the Rebbe Shalom and lie to him and say all these wonderful things in Shemar Nesri that you don't really mean? Say all kinds of praises to Hashem that you're really not up to? Your whole davening is phony. You got to be honest. Talk to the Rabbi Mishael. You don't believe me? You think I'm being radical here? You think I'm being not so from? I'll tell you who I learned it from. David Amelech. Did you ever open it to him? Did you ever open it to him? You hear the way he talks to the Rabbi Mishael? We never dare talk like that. We got to learn how to. David HaMelech, the Melech is the, the lave of the Am, the heart. In Tilim, he's expressing all of the different feelings a Jew can have. And they're all surrounding the way he feels about the Rabbani Shalom and the way he calls out to the Rabbani Shalom. Ura wake up, why are you sleeping, Asha? <laughs> you dare say such a thing? David HaMelech. David HaMelech, he's in the Merkava. David HaMelech, he's teaching us to be real, to be honest. You're not going to be honest with the Rabbeinu Shalom. Be honest. Scream at him. If that's the way you feel. If that's the way you feel. Be honest. Be honest with the Rabbeinu Shalom. That's what he wants. What's with Bitochen? Of course you can grow in your Bitochen. But how can you grow in your Bitochen when you're beginning with an artificial kind of relationship with the Rabbi Nishalayla? When you're real with him, when you feel close to him, and that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You're talking out with him. You cry your heart out to him. You express your anger and you feel that he listens. You develop a real relationship. Your emuna becomes real. Now we can talk bitachin. There's no bitachin without emuna, And emuna isn't real if you're not honest with the Rabbi Shalaylo. Talk your heart out. You're suffering. You can't figure out why. Ay, there are so many lonely hearts and broken hearts. 
individuals suffering all alone, families suffering, the first thing to do, search your heart. See where you're holding. Talk to the Rabbi Nishle. If what you're holding is, I don't get this, I don't understand this. But why are you doing this to me? Say so! Say so! Rabbi Nishle, make it clear to me, what, what do you want me to get out of this? What are you waiting for? What do you want to see in me? You're just making me struggle, and I don't know the secret of what it's about. Help me understand. Whether it's a tsara, whether it's an opportunity that's come up, and you're not sure which way to go, the first thing you do is ask the Ravina Shalom for guidance. He's got to be part of your life for real in everything that's going on. This is basic emuna. Best expressed in the Bechol Kareinu Eilav. A real relationship with the Ravina Shalai. Expressed constantly. Talking to him. Talking to him. With honesty. With honesty. And he listens. Karoi Hashem Bechol Karov. He's close to all those who call out with him. With one condition. L'choil asher yikro'uhu be'emes, with truth. No stilted rituals. Be honest. Be open. He's there. He's listening. He's there for you. He loves you. Talk to him. And see how it feels. <laughs>